Okay, let's uh, talk about section three of chapter two now. <clears throat> it's about carbon. Um, we talk about carbon specifically because um, it is the element that forms the backbone, if you will, of many molecules that we see in living thing, things. And um, the study of carbon-based compounds is generally known as organic chemistry or carbon-based chemistry. And it, of course, involves living things, but also there are many carbon-based molecules that we don't find in living things. Um, carbon is a very versatile element having a valence of four. I guess it has four valence electrons, four electrons in its outer orbital, you remember, because it has its six protons, six, whoops, six neutrons, two carbons in that inner orbital, and then one, two, three, four. So it would like to get four more uh, uh, electrons. And so it does that by bonding with other atoms. It um, can bond with itself, with other carbons, I should say, and with many other types of elements. Um, now, what's the common theme with these particular organic molecules that you see? Well, you'll notice that they consist exclusively of just hydrogen and carbon. These are all examples of what you call hydrocarbons, which, as the name suggests, are ones that consist exclusively of hydrogen and carbon. And they can be very simple from things like methane and much more complicated. They can have double and even triple bonds, and they can form these rings, these interconnected carbons that form a ring. That's a common theme as well. Um, okay, so the, um, many, like I said, many of the molecules you see in living things are carbon-based. And some of these are what we classify as macromolecules or basically large molecules. And you'll see some examples here in a second. Um, these macromolecules typically consist of monomers or what are the basic units of the macromolecule and then the, the polymer which is the macromolecule, which is basically a bunch of monomers bonded together into one large macromolecule or a polymer. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at the, the macromolecules that you find in living things. The first are carbohydrates, or what are more generally referred to as sugars. And the monomer for sugars are known as monosaccharides, or basically a sugar monomer. And here are some examples of typical kinds of monosaccharides, fructose, glucose, galactose. You've probably heard of some of these names, glucose. And they are molecules, these carbohydrates consist of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen exclusively. Uh, yeah, pretty much exclusively. And so here are ones that you can see they form this ring, and, and the structure you have here is sort of, a, sort of an abbreviated structure. At each of the little nodes here, there is a carbon, and there's also a couple hydrogens attached. So there'll be a carbon here and another hydrogen, carbon here. It's just they're leaving out those basic carbons and hydrogens which you assume is there, are there and showing you the other parts of the molecule. Um, now, if you were to look closely at these um, different examples of monosaccharides, fructose, glucose, and galactose, you'll notice that they all have the same chemical formula. That is, it's C6 H12 O6. It's just that they have a different arrangement of those different atoms. Um, this is the typical arrangement you see in monosaccharides. Basically, for every one carbon, you have two hydrogens and one oxygen. 
Um, these are examples of one that just happened to have six carbons. So the polymers of sugars are known as polysaccharides. And so if you take a bunch of these monosaccharides, in this case, you just take a bunch of glucose molecules and bond them together one after another in this, a long strand, and then the strand will keep going on and on. It can be very long. You have a polysaccharide. Um, starch is an example of a sugar polysaccharide that consists just of a bunch of glucoses bonded in long chains. And you probably have heard of starch, I'm sure. It's it's um, common plant polysaccharide. You find it in potatoes, and it's basically the main part of many seeds. Um, so when you grind up wheat, you have uh, quite a bit of starch there. Okay, uh, here, by the way, is a very detailed look at our glucose molecule with that abbreviated structure, and here's looking at the detail with all the carbons and hydrogens and such. Okay. Now, the next type of macromolecule, these are known as lipids. And lipids, um, there are several types of lipids, um, but the basic type is shown here, which is known as a triglyceride. Okay. And you can see it's a relatively large molecule, and it consists of this three carbon molecule, which is called glycerol, and three of these long chains of carbons and hydrogens. So this part is glycerol. And these three things are known as fatty acids. And so a triglyceride consists of three fatty acids and this one glycerol, together making a triglyceride or basically a lipid. Um, triglycerides come in sort of two main flavors, if you will, and that is there are fats and oils. Um, you'll notice that these fatty acids differ. This one is just a, these two are just long straight chains, but this one has a bend in it because it has this double bond. It's missing some hydrogens and two of the carbons have bonded together with a double covalent bond. That causes this chain to bend. When you have triglycerides with those kinds of fatty acids, with these double bonded carbons, those are the oils. The oils are basically liquids at room temperature, whereas the fats consist exclusively of the straight ones and they are solids at room temperature. So for example, butter contains milk fat and it's a solid at room temperature, whereas canola oil, olive oil, corn oil um, contain these uh, fatty acids with the double bonds and the bends and they are oils. Um, another way of thinking of fatty acids is you have fatty acids that are known as being saturated fatty acids, that is they full of all their hydrogens and they're straight. And then there's the unsaturated fatty acids. You may have heard these terms. They're missing some hydrogens and have the double bonded carbons and the bend. All right. Another type are nucleic acids. Nucleic acids, the examples being DNA and RNA, which we're going to talk about a lot more later. Um, and we talked about in the first chapter, of course, how DNA is essentially the hereditary material that you find in living things. We'll, we'll talk later about RNA, a variation on DNA. Um, now, the basic unit of a nucleic acid or the monomer is called a nucleotide. And nucleotides consist of three parts. You have what's called a phosphate group, a sugar, and then this thing called a, a nucleoside. And together the nucleoside sugar, I'm sorry, not a nucleoside, a nitrogenous base. So you have the nitrogenous base, the sugar, and the phosphate, and together 
they make up a nucleotide. Um, and then you put a bunch of these nucleotides together in long chains, and you basically get a nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA. Um, we'll talk about the details of much more details of them later. We'll see that there are basically five types of nucleotides, and when you put them in various combinations, that leads to the incredible variation that we see in DNA and RNA. DNA and RNA molecules, particularly DNA, can be extremely long, can have hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of these nucleotides just in a long strand. All right, proteins, um, the other type of macromolecule. Um, the basic unit or monomer of a protein is an amino acid, and you've probably heard of them, I imagine. Amino acids, they consist of this unit here, this C with the two O's. That's known as a carboxyl group. And this nitrogen with three hydrogens, known as an amino group. And then there's a carbon in the middle with a hydrogen attached. And then what's known as the R group. And in all amino acids, this part is always the same. But we'll see there are basically, there are 20 types of amino acid, and it's the R group that is different in each of those amino acids. So when you put a bunch of these amino acids together, you get a protein. Or another name for a protein, we'll use as well, is also what's known as a polypeptide. And the name comes from the type of bond that forms between two amino acids. It's known as a peptide bond. So here we have two simple type of amino acids. Um, and if I remember correctly, these types are called glycine. It's the simplest type of amino acid because you'll notice here the R group in this one is simply a hydrogen. It's relatively simple. So what we do is we extract or remove this hydrogen and this OH group, and they basically leave as water. And the carbon of one amino acid bonds with the nitrogen of the adjacent one. And again, we call this a peptide bond. And when you put a bunch of these together, peptide bond here, peptide bond here, here, etc., you get your polypeptide. Now notice in these amino acids, in the green box is the R group for these different types of amino acids. You can see they're all different for the most part, although these, these two are the same here. And that R group can be quite variable. Unlike this, which it was only an H up here, these have more complex R groups, which give those amino acids and those proteins that have them interesting properties. So your basic protein is a long chain of amino acids. Sometimes though, proteins can take those individual strands of amino acids and put several of them together to make a very large and complex molecule. For example, hemoglobin, which you may have heard of that, which is in red blood cells and it's the, whoops, it's the molecule that carries oxygen, consists of four separate units. Each of these separate units, the green, the purple, the pink, and the red, is a long strand of amino acids that's folded up into this three-dimensional shape. And then each of those four units, which are known as um, um, alpha and beta chains, get together to form this large protein known as hemoglobin. Um, the heme group, which you don't have to worry about that so much, but it's it's this uh, structure inside of each protein, um, which is responsible for carrying the oxygen that uh, red blood cells carry. Okay, so there's our look at um, some of those organic-based molecules and some of these these macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins that we find in living things. Um, Okay, that's it.